The femoral sheath is made by extensions, the transversalis fascia anteriorly, and the iliac fascia posteriorly. It begins at the inguinal ligament. Within the femoral sheath is the femoral artery, femoral vein, and femoral canal. Each separated by these septi, or partitions. Let's consider the femoral canal in isolation for a moment. So it's a conical structure, a bit over a centimetre long. It contains a bit of lymph vessel, is said to contain just one lymph node, and there's also some connective tissue in there as well. And it may sound small and insignificant, but is clinically relevant as the site of femoral hernia. The entrance to the canal, the open portion up top, is called the femoral ring. And we can remember its boundaries with the mnemonic slip. Lateral, we've got the medial scepter of the femoral sheath. Medial, we have the lacuna ligament. Anterior, the inguinal ligament. And posterior, lying flush with the pubic bone, we have the pectineal ligament. These are particularly inflexible ligaments, which is a worry for us because if small bowel moves into the canal in the setting of a femoral hernia, there's a high risk of strangulation. With enough pressure behind it, a femoral hernia will forge its way down the canal and then push out the saphenous opening, which is a hole in the fascia lata. This isn't a particularly forgiving ring either. So we now have two places at which tight borders may cut off blood supply to this herniated organ, leaving us with an ischemic piece of bowel lurking underneath the skin. Femoral hernias are uncommon and mainly occur in female anatomy due to the wider shape of the pelvis. And we're going to leave it there for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.